Mayim Bialik may have brought joy to millions on The Big Bang Theory, but the comedy stopped when the cameras were off. From the sudden death of a co-star to her ongoing mental health struggles, Bialik's off-screen life is no laughing matter. Back in August 2012, Mayim Bialik was driving in Los Angeles when another car crashed into hers while making a turn. She was taken to the hospital with a serious injury to her left hand. The actor informed her fans via X, formerly known as Twitter, that she'd make a full recovery and thankfully wouldn't lose any fingers. My hand got the brunt of it, but thank God I'm okay. The following week, Bialik spoke with Vanity Fair about the accident. She told the outlet that she wanted to recover privately, but that she appreciated the outpouring of love from fans. The following year, the actor sued the driver of the other vehicle for the injuries sustained to her hand, which she was still recovering from. When Mayim Bialik was a grad student at UCLA, she met Michael Stone, and the two hit it off. All seemed perfect, but there was just one problem. She was Jewish, and he was raised Mormon. As the actor explained to Stone, she wouldn't be able to marry him unless he converted. So that's exactly what he did. The couple tied the knot in 2003 and had two sons. Unfortunately, the pairing wasn't meant to be, and in 2013, Bialik and Stone got a divorce. In November 2012, the actor released a blog post on the Jewish parenting site Caveller about their decision to separate, writing, after much consideration and soul-searching, Michael and I have arrived at the decision to divorce due to irreconcilable differences. I tried to be married once, like I was in that position, and I failed. Bialik and Stone have remained cordial as they've continued co-parenting their sons, whom they share joint custody of. Mayim Bialik's father, Barry, died in April 2015 at the age of 72. Soon after, the actor took to Caveller to share a blog post about her father's death and the grief she was experiencing. Bialik's father had been in hospice for months, giving the family time to prepare and come to terms with the end of his life, but it was still a gut-wrenching loss. She wrote, For those of you who have lost a parent, you know how I feel. You tell me you do. For those of you who have lost someone else you were close to, you also tell me you know how I feel. Jewish mourning is profound, and I am deep in it." Many years later, Bialik turned the loss of her father into her first feature-length film, As They Made Us, which she directed and co-wrote. In speaking with Yahoo Entertainment in 2022, she described the film's premise and how it relates to her life, saying, "...the way I framed it is that it's not a memoir." And it's not autobiography. By definition, that means there are things in it that have never happened. And there are things that have been fabricated. Following the groundbreaking revelations around Harvey Weinstein's alleged abusive behavior in early October 2017, celebrities everywhere spoke out about the scandal. Some shared their experiences of sexual assault within the industry, while others, like Bialik, were seen as adding fuel to the fire. In October of 2017, Bialik penned an op-ed for the New York Times titled, Being a Feminist in Harvey Weinstein's World. She wrote about her experience working in Hollywood, saying that her non-traditional looks led to her being cast as the frumpy friend. As a result, Bialik noted she wasn't sexualized as harshly. She wrote in the piece, I still make choices every day as a 41-year-old actress that I think of as self-protecting and wise. I have decided that my sexual self is best reserved for private situations with those I am most intimate with. I dress modestly. I don't act flirtatiously with men as a policy." Many readers took her words to mean that she blamed Weinstein's victims for their abuse, as perhaps they didn't dress modestly or flirted with men when they shouldn't have. A few days after her story was published, Bialik spoke with the New York Times on Facebook Live to clear up any misconceptions. The actor explained, there is no way to avoid being the victim of assault by what you wear or the way you behave. I am deeply, deeply hurt if any woman in particular who has been assaulted or a man thinks that I was victim blaming. Obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD is an often misunderstood mental health diagnosis that is composed of repetitive thoughts and behaviors. OCD can also severely impact a person's day-to-day -day life. In May 2019, Mayim Bialik took part in the My Younger Self campaign, 
a movement run by Child Mind Institute intended to reduce the stigma around mental health and learning disorders. In her video, she revealed that she lives with OCD and stated what she would like to tell her younger self. Bialik said, One of the things that made my life really difficult was trying new things. With trusting other people and learning to trust other people and lean on them for support, you can make changes and still be okay. Change is possible, change can be good, and even when it's scary, it's still okay. Since starting her podcast, Maya and Bialik's Breakdown in 2020, Bialik has become a prominent voice in the world of mental health. The actor's platform has allowed her to discuss her own personal struggles, including the fact that she is now in recovery for an eating disorder. In a March 2021 episode of her podcast, Bialik said that she was motivated by her guest Glennon Doyle to open up about her eating disorder, seeing as Doyle had been so honest about the difficulties in her life. I mean, I only feel inspired because of her. Bialik explained, This is the first time I've ever talked about it, because people are like, well, why are you so overweight? Well, because I'm a compulsive overeater in addition to being an anorexic and restrictor. Thankfully, she added that at the time of recording, she had been in recovery for two years already. Back in 2012, Mayim Bialik published a book about parenting, Beyond the Sling, in which she talked about not vaccinating her children. She wrote in the book, We made an informed decision not to vaccinate our children, but this is a very personal decision that should be made only after sufficient research, which today is within reach of every parent who seeks to learn about their child's health regardless of their medical knowledge or educational status. Bialik was subsequently labeled an anti-vaxxer. And when COVID came about, the internet was quick to resurface comments she had made about vaccinations. Given her prominence in Hollywood and the fact that she has a PhD in neuroscience, commenters online were shocked by the actor's stance. In October 2020, Bialik released a video on YouTube that set the record straight about her thoughts on getting vaccinated. She revealed that she would be getting the COVID vaccine and that her sons would be getting their first ever flu shots as well. But I have never, not once, said that vaccines are not valuable, not useful, or not necessary, because they are. Bialik went on to say that her reasons for delaying her children's vaccinations were private, but that they are now vaccinated. When the beloved Jeopardy! host Alex Trebek died in 2020, Ken Jennings and Mayim Bialik were handed the reins. They took turns hosting the show, alternating every couple of months, and fans were quick to offer their thoughts on their performances. Sadly, the Big Bang Theory actor received some strong criticism around everything from her timing to her own personal beliefs. Several posts on Reddit painted Bialik in a harsh light, with one user writing, Would anyone else agree that Mayim can come off as condescending? It became clear that Jennings was the preferred host which was a difficult pill for Bialik to swallow. In a 2022 interview with Yahoo Entertainment, the host addressed the comments made about her by the Jeopardy! audience. People care a lot. I get it, and I'm sorry I'm doing my best. Despite being a target for hateful comments online, the actor said that she does enjoy several aspects of hosting the game show. I love meeting all the contestants. I really do. I love to hear their stories. Leslie Jordan had been acting since the 80s and became known for his roles on Will and Grace and American Horror Story before he co-starred alongside Bialik in Call Me Cat. He played Phil in what would become his last television show appearance, as the actor died in October 2022 at the age of 67 from sudden cardiac dysfunction. Of course, those who had worked with him were devastated by Jordan's death, Bialik posted a heartfelt message to Instagram. Fox also released a statement on behalf of the cast and crew, which read, Leslie was far more than an Emmy award-winning comedic talent with whom we've laughed alongside for all these years. He was the kindest person you could ever imagine, who simply lit up a room and brought pure joy and huge smiles to millions of people around the world. But the way Bialik and many of the cast members found out about Jordan's death emphasizes the tragedy all the more. During an appearance on The Jennifer Hudson Show, Bialik mentioned that she and the rest of the cast had been expecting Jordan on set when they heard the news. We were all at work and waiting for him to show up at work, so it was very, very 
very complicated, you know, to have the whole crew there and, and the whole cast. If you need help with an eating disorder or know someone who does, help is available. Visit the National Eating Disorders Association website or contact Nita's live helpline at 1-800-931-2237. You can also receive 24-7 crisis support via text. Send NIDA to 741-741.